So here a video on using Inkscape and as you are just new to Inkscape uh, there are some things I want to make you aware of. Uh, your layout may be different than what I have on the screen so that's where I'm gonna be going through a little bit. So first of all you can go here to the view and the default view that will most likely you will have this view that you have icons here on the side you have some windows open over here and you have some of your icons here on top and I like my view to be in the custom view that way I'm getting my icons here on top instead of here on the side and then there is also a setting and you can go here to the wide and that will also put all your icons here on the right hand side so that is a personal preference so I will go back to the custom view here and then also in the view there there you can go and set if you want to have your guides visible or not visible so as I'm dragging a guide here and you can drag as many as you want from the top going down and from the left going in you can drag as many as you want and if you want the visibility of the guides then you can just like that you can turn them off in the view also with uh, page grid uh, then that depends on uh, your page grid you can set up in the preferences then you have also in the view you have the x-ray mode and also I want to make you aware there are shortcuts here on the right hand side beside it so if you really want to use shortcuts the shortcuts are there and also sometimes I'll use the x-ray mode and the x-ray mode that will show you as you can see I'm now putting the mouse over top and now I can see my lines all underneath so sometimes if you have a few objects on top of each other then you can see if there's an object hidden underneath and if you need to select that then this is one way of finding out exactly where that object is and you can just like that you can turn it back off again and now you're in the normal again also what can happen uh, I'll just have to check here for a moment I just turned off something what can happen is I'll zoom out a little bit that for some reason and you're turning your canvas and that can be done with the holding the control key as you can see right beside the mouse I'm holding down the control key and I'm holding the center mouse button now I can go and rotate the canvas and that can be annoying if we accidentally use a wrong button in order to reset that then what we go and do is we go to view and we go canvas orientation and we can go and reset the rotation and then we can go canvas orientation lock rotation so now I'll try to go and do the same thing and as you can see now it will not rotate the canvas anymore then moving around in on the screen as you can see I can slide it back and forth and up and down in any direction I want 
and that is by holding down the center mouse button. Zooming in, I'm using the roller wheel. Zooming out, also the roller wheel, but then in the opposite direction. By holding down the control key, we will slide it up and down. And by holding down the shift key, we will go the horizontal movement. So it depends on how you want to maneuver around. You can also, if you have a certain object selected, you can also go here, zoom to fit selection in window, or you can zoom to fit a drawing in a window. So if I go here, zoom to the selection, now that's what I had selected is being zoomed into. And if I go to the design, then I have my whole design on the on the screen again. So that is uh, that. Uh, okay, I'm going through my list here a little bit. On I made some notes on what I should be talking about. Okay, here are your dockable windows. You can dock them, undock them, uh, you can make them floating. There are many possibilities. Uh, I like my objects panel. As you can see here, we can only see one path at a time and that becomes a little bit annoying. So what can be done is we can grab this and we can move it out of the way. As you can see, now we have a floating window and we can put it wherever we feel like. And I can even put it on a second monitor if you have so. And we can just like that and we can go and put it back again by dragging it back over here again and as you noticed I grab it here on the objects and drag it over and the way the blue box is that's where it will pop back into place as you can see now the objects are here but I like to have more objects visible so what I then do is I drag it out of here and now I will drag it back and as you can see now I'm getting a narrow blue box going all the way down and that's when I drop it and now it will drop beside these boxes that way uh, I can see more of my objects open and it becomes in my opinion easier to work with my working screen becomes a little smaller but uh, that is still no problem to work with. So it just depends on on what you want in that aspect. Uh, and if some of these windows are not open, you can find them under Object Objects. That's where the objects uh, panel will be open and closing. There you find the fill and stroke. And another one what might be handy sometimes is the align and distribute. And under path, uh, the path effects can be uh, a handy one. And you find the trace bitmap over here also. Okay, thanks for watching and hope this will, will help you and I'll make a few other ones and we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.